Sometimes people have a difficult time finding happiness in anything. Always seeing the glass half empty. Hello, are you happy people? You know what? I'm the hero. These pessimists will voice their complaints, seeing the worst in everything. You think you would do these things, but you can't, Nemo! In the world of the Transformers, the Autobots must contend with the pessimistic complaints of the Autobot construction engineer, Huffer. It'll never work. Big waste of time. I'd like to thank my patrons and my channel members for your continued support. Consider becoming one, or purchase some merch on my Spring Store today. As I explained in my Gears retrospective, some of the cancelled Mysterians toys were released by Takara as part of their MicroChange toy line. One of them was simply labeled as an American truck, which somewhat resembles a single-axle Volvo F88. This toy was imported by Hasbro as part of the Transformers toy line in 1984 as Huffer. According to his bio as written by Bob Budiansky, Huffer is the Autobot's cynical, hard-boiled, and pessimistic construction engineer. Although he's not too sociable, often unhappy, and complains it can't be built, Huffer is absolutely reliable, using his strength in addition to his superior mathematical and geometrical abilities. First introduced in the Marvel comics, Huffer was among the Autobots aboard the Ark that crash-landed on Earth four million years ago. Reawakening in the then-present day of 1984, Huffer suggested that the Autobots forget about the Decepticons and that they use his skills to rebuild the Ark to get them back to Cybertron where they belonged. However, Bumblebee and Ironhide both quickly put him back in his place. Despite his pessimism, Huffer was assigned to work on getting the Ark operational again. When it was learned that Sparkplug was forced to help the Decepticons, Huffer wanted nothing more than to take revenge on the puny human. The argument led to Sparkplug having a heart attack, and Ratchet quickly rushed him to the hospital. Huffer then helped defend the Ark against the Decepticon attack, which the Autobots won thanks to Sparkplug, who in reality had given the Decepticons a corrosive formula for fuel. This victory was short-lived, however, with the arrival of Shockwave. Despite being used as a ceiling ornament by Shockwave, Huffer was eventually rescued and repaired by Ratchet. Sidetrack from finishing the Autobots' monitoring antenna, Huffer repaired their radio wave scrambler, as he was homesick and eager to get back in contact with Cybertron. Meanwhile, the Decepticons attacked and commandeered a space radio telescope while stealing trucks to use as raw materials. Hoping to lift his spirits, Prowl sent Huffer with the Autobots to stop the Decepticons. While driving, Huffer was stopped by one of the truckers, Bomber Bill, who wanted help getting his rig back. As the Autobots battled the Decepticons, the Constructicons merged to form Devastator, while Soundwave prepared the Space Radio Telescope to contact Cybertron. Huffer's desire to call back home caused him to hesitate in stopping Soundwave, but with a little help from Bomber Bill, Huffer was able to knock back the Decepticon communicator. After the Decepticons retreated, Huffer asked the Autobots for forgiveness in letting his homesickness cloud his judgment. However, Bomber Bill reassured him, as he was just as homesick himself when his truck was stolen. Despite this, Huffer realized he was still unable to go back home. A short time later, Huffer displayed his strength and dedication to the Autobot cause when he towed Optimus Prime's body in truck mode to rescue his head from the Decepticons. With a little help from Buster Witwicky and Jetfire, Optimus Prime was restored and Shockwave was defeated. Unfortunately, like many of his fellow first-year Autobot comrades, Huffer ended up spending most of the comics run on Ratchet's repair table. Even the UK exclusive stories use Huffer sparingly, as he was blasted by Decepticons, seen decorating a Christmas tree, and even helped wrangle the Dinobot swoop. His final appearance was watching his fellow Autobots battle for leadership on the moon. Huffer did get to put his strength to good use years later in his brief appearance in the Regeneration 1 comics. While Huffer was not featured as much in the comics, his pessimism, as voiced by John Stevenson, was rather noticeable in the cartoon. There's two things I really hate, Ron. What are they? Fire and water. Great, you're in the right place. Whenever the Autobots had a rough battle against the Decepticons, it was quite often that Huffer would complain how hopeless their situation seemed. But we're not fighting! 
fighters like they are, Prime! We must have courage, Huffer. We can't ignore the danger. We must conquer it. He especially didn't care for Wheeljack and Ratchet's creations, the Dinobots. Brilliant baloney, Wheeljack. Once a dino clutch, always a dino clutch. And his complaining even made other depressed Autobots feel worse. Yo, Gears! Get with it! Put that slab in right, or we're gonna be here till the Big Dipper gets rusty! Some of the other Autobots didn't appreciate this, and at times they'd even call Huffer out on his pessimism, too. I know the racing bit was bad news, but would anybody listen to me? Oh no! Stifle it, Huffer, or I'll put my footio in your audio! Despite not being the most positive of the Autobots, Huffer's strength was quite often put to good use, such as when he helped round up a few time-displaced woolly mammoths, or when battling against the Decepticons. He was even able to carry Optimus Prime's trailer when the Autobot leader was badly damaged fighting Megatron. Let me take that load, Optimus. You're a true friend, Huffer. Huffer also used his skills as a construction engineer to help build the second set of Dinobots and in rebuilding from the aftermath of Cybertron briefly being in Earth's orbit. With a little help from mass shifting, Huffer even carried hoist while in truck mode in search of tracks through New York City. Huffer's final appearance was in Transformers the movie, helping Cup with a roadblock. While it was not seen happening on screen, Huffer was among the Autobot casualties during the Battle of Autobot City, as confirmed in the Season 3 episode, Dark Awakening. Ironhide. Ratchet. Pro. Huffer. In 1986, Hover's toy was retooled and replaced with a new character, Pipes, who prominently appeared in Season 3, barring any animation mishaps. Strangely enough, Huffer's unaltered but redeco toy was re-released in 1986 in European markets as Pipes. Fans dubbed this variant as Puffer. In the Dreamwave comics, Huffer was among the Autobots that fought against a techno-organic virus that was unleashed by Megatron. He then accompanied Optimus Prime to help liberate Cybertron from Shockwave's control. However, he was quick to complain when Prowl suggested that the Autobots return to Earth. Prowl assured Huffer that his engineering skills and knowledge of Earth's physical properties were invaluable despite the fact that both of them would still miss their home world. In 2004, Huffer's figure was reissued by Takara as part of their Transformers collection as he came packaged with five other minibots. Later that year, this set was redecoed as an eHobby exclusive collector's edition set. According to the bio card, these six minibots are in fact GoBots that cross over into the Japanese G1 Transformers universe, and the heroic Guardian, Road Ranger, took on a body resembling Huffer. Huffer's appearance in the IDW comics were relatively brief. He came to Earth under Ultra Magnus' command, worried about his comrade's safety, and complained about fleeing from humans. Despite having an updated new look, Huffer remained a background character, which didn't get any better as he further went into obscurity as part of the Lost Light crew. Huffer's first new figure in over two decades came as a BotCon exclusive in 2007. A redeco of Transformer Cybertron's armor hide, Huffer transformed into a Volvo FH Globetrotter and briefly appeared in the tie-in Classics comics. This figure probably served as inspiration for Huffer's Power Core Combiner figure in 2010. Instead of a Cyber Planet Key activated crane, this Huffer figure came packaged with a Minicon partner, Caliburst, and he could form the torso of any combination of Power Core Combiner drone limbs. Outside of G1, Huffer's appearances have been all but brief, Hope I get lucky. while other pessimistic characters enter the Transformers universe. These included the Maximal Rat Trap. It's like I always say, we're all gonna die. I know, I know, shut up, Rat Trap. And the Stunticon Dead End. Face it, we're doomed. Huffer's first new incarnation was part of Transformers Animated in 2009. Designed by the late great Derek Wyatt to look like Mario, with pipes designed to look like Luigi, Huffer made small, non-speaking cameos on Cybertron. Profiles for both Huffer and Pipes in the AllSpark Almanac characterize them, in contrast to their G1 counterparts, as actually loving their jobs since both of them never came to the planet Earth. In the Align continuity, Huffer received a new figure in 2013, a redeco of Trailcutter as part of the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters toy line. 
Although he made no actual animated appearance, Huffer was one of the many Autobots blacklisted by the High Council in 2015's Robots in Disguise cartoon. Huffer's G1 self wasn't completely forgotten, as he was released in the Creo toy line in 2013, with a more toy-accurate deco the following year. In the Combiner Wars toy line, Legends-class IDW Optimus Prime was retooled with a new head as Huffer in 2015. It was this version of Huffer that made an appearance in the Earth Wars mobile game, and was the model used for Huffer in IDW's rebooted continuity in 2019. Working under Wheeljack as an engineer, Huffer still found reasons to complain, as he eventually joined the Autobots after the rise of the Decepticons. Huffer received a new figure for the War for Cybertron Trilogy's Kingdom toy line in 2021. Now no longer a redeco of a previous mold, this new figure could even carry Optimus Prime's trailer, similar to how he could back in G1. Huffer was also once again retooled into pipes, and both characters were absent from the War for Cybertron trilogy's animated series on Netflix. As part of the Golden Disc collection, an Amazon-exclusive 2-pack was released that redecoed both characters into Puffer and Road Ranger, respectively. The story, as told through the collection's product descriptions, stated that the quantum surge in the Beast Wars cartoon brought Road Ranger from the GoBots universe and merged both Huffer and Pipes into Puffer as they arrive on prehistoric Earth in an alternate timeline to stop Pterosaur from ruling the Predacons. Perhaps Huffer's pessimistic and cynical attitude towards his job may have contributed to making him absent from much of Transformers media. But go ahead with your demonstration, it'll only prove my point. However, his strength and construction skills are by no means forgotten, even if all he can do is complain about it. I knew it was hopeless, I just knew. But what do you think? Did Huffer's pessimism warrant his lack of media attention? Or is there more to him that meets the eye? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you like this video, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. I have many more Transformers videos like this coming soon, so stay tuned. And as always, until next time, till all are one. But we can! We get your message, Spike! Autobots! Transform!